So the next activity that you're going to do is called the World of Work game. And honestly, I dread this every time. Uh, my best recommendation for you is that you read the manual about how to play it, and then you talk with somebody at JA to make sure you're playing it right. The good thing is, the kids have no idea if you're playing it right or wrong. You can make up the rules as you go, and so long as you accomplish the objectives, that's okay too. Um, what's also challenging about this game is you're going to have the kids split up into groups, and depending upon the layout of the classroom, they hopefully were in individual seats. Now they're together. This is when the ruckus level starts to climb a little bit. So while they're doing this activity, it's very important, I find, that you walk around to each of the table groups that are each individually playing this game. Make sure they're engaged, make sure they're moving along, make sure they understand what they're doing. Um, when the students are playing this game, you have to pre-explain to them that this is to talk about the value of staying in school versus getting an education and the real benefit in their pocketbook financially that that will have someday. I have found that these kids are very motivated by money, you know, who isn't at that age, and really spend a lot of time talking before about, you know, how successful do you want to be? Do you want to have money? Do you want to be able to go to the movies? Do you want to be a big spender? And really linking that back to education and Usually at this point the kids are asking me how much I make and I usually don't tell them exactly how much I make but they play a guessing game and we get in the range and then usually they're like, wow, you had to go to school for a long time. And I think that really drives it home. So once you explain that and we go to the game, a couple other things to think in mind. I would recommend having one person be the scorer keeper. You can have multiple kids, but if you have one kid, some of these kids are not that good in math, and you'll really see this as you get through throughout the day. You'll be having calculators, and a lot of them have never used a calculator. Don't know how to use it, don't know how to add, don't know how to subtract. That was very surprising to me the first time I did this. So be prepared that you can have a room of high school kids that don't know how to add 20 plus 80 plus 140. So be prepared for that. Um, when I play this game, I usually try to, like I said, plant the seed that the longer they go to school, the more points that they will have, which will equate to money. Depending on the time limit that you have for the game, usually about 20 minutes, there is a way, depending on how the dice rolls, where if the kids actually drop out of high school, and continue answering questions right, they could have more points than somebody that has not finished going around the board. So try to set that drive in them to go around the board all the way first and see the benefit. Maybe if they're being slow, kind of give them a hint as to what would happen. Um, I, I find whenever the kids are in groups, they're really challenging and I think they really do enjoy this because they love competition, they love competing with each other. Uh, but you're going to have, you know, the, the chips, you're going to have fights over who's what color chip. And, you know, I'm, I'm serious. Um, these are the things that you have to think about in advance and just say, okay, you're going to be this color, you're going to be this color, we'll play it again, and then you can flip colors. Um, also, the die sometimes becomes a mechanism for rolling off the table and getting up off the seat and throwing it across the room. Again, just continue to walk around the table, and usually I find that when you're at each table, the kids are very engaged, they want to talk to you, they want to tell you what they're doing, they want to make sure they understand the game. Um, so continue to do that, because as you do that, it forces the kids to spend more time on the game and a little less time, you know, throwing the die somewhere so they can get up and, and wander around the room. Um, I would also recommend playing this game twice or if you're afraid you're going to run out of time, maybe come back later and play it again. It will help the kids develop another strategy. So, for example, one of the things that I really like is when one of the kids decides they're going to drop out after high school, or they're going to finish high school and that's all they're going to do, and because that's, they know people and they're, in their minds, very successful. 
Um, I had a girl once tell me that she didn't need to finish high school because her brother didn't, and now he's the manager of a gas station making $10 an hour. In her mind, that was successful. So she strategized and played that way in this game and realized that everybody else beat her. And so it was interesting to see when she played it the next time, how she actually stayed in and went to school. So this is a good thing. You can play once, and then if you have more time at the end of the day, come around and play it. Or you can play it twice, depending upon your time and how it's going.